off. The silver move, and there goes a Crown Ambassador up and after the lead. Cash Atreya veered out soon after the start, and his third as they head for the turn. Hex up close to a lively early pace on the outside. Fourth, Affair with Peaches moves in five fifth, just ahead of Jules, who's sixth. Accelerators at the back of the pack with El Joven the trailer. Around the clubhouse turn, Crown Ambassador is the leader, and the silver move comes through on the inside. The quarter and into the stiff wind in 24 and one fifth seconds. Into the back stretch now with the wind at their backs. It's Crown Ambassador three quarters of a length. The silver move pressing on the inside, second a length. Hex on the outside, just off the pace, running third. In behind the front three, it's Kasha Trey of fourth. Two lengths back, Affair with Peaches is fifth. Jules is running sixth, unhurried at this point, but he's nine or ten lengths behind the front runner, Crown Ambassador. Farther back, Accelerator and El Joven. The half and 48 and two at the half mile pole. Crown Ambassador still leads the way. Crown Ambassador striding out now by a length and a half. The silver moves running in second. Hex is third. Cash Atreya still fourth. And Jules is kicking in. He's making a move with three furlongs to go. He's by a fair with Peaches. He rockets past Cash Atreya and Hex. He is taking aim at the front runners as the field turns for home. Crown Ambassador is the leader. The silver move trying to get by him. Jules made a powerful move on the far turn. He draws within striking range of the leaders as they come down to this final furlong marker. Accelerator is fourth. It's the silver move who's emerged with the lead. Jules giving his best, trying to get by a very game. The silver move, the silver move is holding on and turning back Jules and all the rest. The silver move has won the Remsen by three conclusive lengths over Jules. Trainer Linda Rice has a reputation of winning with a horse early in its career. She's one of the most successful trainers on our circuit, and I didn't even have to say woman trainer. I'm sure you could see that. Linda Rice, often called the queen of the two-year-olds, and one of those two-year-olds won the Remsen. Now, this reputation of being the queen of the two-year-olds, we know how that happens. You keep coming up with them year in and year out. Explain that. Well, I, uh, it is my forte, and it's what I've known for, uh, been known for. But that comes from a family background. My family's uh, broken, trained, and sold and been a family of pin hookers for a long time, and that's how I got into racing. So uh, I would imagine that's why I excel at it. Do they still pin hook? Is that basically what you do? They'll pin hook and then you'll find an owner or they'll find an owner for that horse? Yes, that's what they do, and um, they sell at all the Miami sales and whatnot, and it's been a very good uh, um, mm, reservoir of horses for myself to find for my own clients and whatnot. A lot of people don't understand what pin hooking is, the, uh, the layman, but it is kind of a fun way to get in this game. I, I think the Paranek, I think Unbridled Song was a pin hook that nobody wanted. Right. He was uh, sold through the Barrett sale and then rejected, I believe, on a uh, x-ray. And, uh, you know, we bought uh, the Silver Move in the March sale as a pin hook. And, uh, but we were the buyers, not the pin hookers. That's uh, Earl Silver and, and Mr. Eiserman and I. Just decided to keep them. Yes. It was never anyone's intention to, to sell. Well, we bought, bought him from pin hookers. So really, I myself and my clients are working on the end, other end of it. For, that's very odd for you. Right. What, what happened? Somebody saw this horse and said, let's take a shot? Well, we worked the sales together, my clients and I, and we purchased four horses out of that sale, and this was one of the four. And uh, um, so we're, we're working as buyers, not as sellers. Now, my family works as sellers. We always say when, it, when one of your horses appears, it's going to win, and then you can buy it. We, we kind of think of you as like the old-fashioned way, the way they do it in Europe. Run them, and then you can have them. Right. Um, there have been quite a few offers entertained on a silver move, but at this time, Mr. Silver still owns him entirely. Okay. Let's find out why. Now, remember, the Remsen produced Thunder Gulch. As you know, Thunder Gulch went on and did something pretty nice the first Saturday in May. So let's look at the Remsen, and then we'll talk about the horse. Here it is. And they're off. The silver move, and there goes a Crown Ambassador up and after the lead. Cash Atreya veered out soon after the start, and his third as they head for the turn. Hex up close to a lively early pace on the outside. Fourth, Affair with Peaches moves in five fifth, just ahead of Jules, who's sixth. Accelerators at the back of the pack with El Joven the trailer. Around the clubhouse turn. Crown Ambassador is the leader, and the silver move comes through on the inside. The quarter and into the stiff wind in 24 and 1 fifth seconds. Into the backstretch now with the wind at their backs. It's Crown Ambassador three quarters of a length. The silver move pressing on the inside second a length. 
Hex on the outside, just off the pace, running third. In behind the front three, it's Kasha Treya fourth. Two lengths back, Affair with Peaches is fifth. Jules is running sixth, unhurried at this point, but he's nine or ten lengths behind the front runner, Crown Ambassador. Farther back, Accelerator and El Joven. The half and 48 and two at the half mile pole. Crown Ambassador still leads the way. Crown Ambassador striding out now by a length and a half. The silver moves running in second. Hex is third. Kasha Trey is still fourth. And Jules is kicking in. He's making a move with three furlongs to go. He's by a fair with Peaches. He rockets past Kasha Treya and Hex. He is taking aim at the front runners as the field turns for home. Crown Ambassador is the leader. The silver move trying to get by him. Jules made a powerful move on the far turn. He draws within striking range of the leaders as they come down to this final furlong marker. Accelerator is fourth. It's the silver move who's emerged with the lead. Jules giving his best, trying to get by a very game. The silver move, the silver move is holding on and turning back Jules and all the rest. The silver move has won the Remsen by three conclusive lengths over Jules. It's a photo for third. Looks like if they went, ran around again, he'd still be in front, which is a good sign. Yes, it is. And he gave 72000 for That's this right. horse. I'm sure that there have been many offers ab above that. Yes, there have. Is Mr. Silver dreaming of the first Saturday? In oh, May? We, we are going to have a very exciting winter. Okay, now so. let's examine the exciting winter. There are a lot of options open. You can go anywhere with this horse or stay here. What are the choices right now? Where are you thinking? Well, um, I think we both have it in mind to try to run in the Gotham or the Wood, um, probably the Wood Memorial, and then hopefully the Kentucky Derby. Um, what we use to get into those races are is a little tentative right now. Uh, possibly we'll run him in the Hutchinson or the Fountain of Youth to bring him into the Wood. So, um, oh, so Florida would be in first stop. Right now, Florida is going to be his first stop, but it's going to be about a month on the farm, and then after that, we'll have to decide which race to use. Does he go to your brother's farm? Yes, to Woodside Ranch. Uh, down in Florida. Right. So that, that's where he'll be resting. That's correct. And th when you buy a horse like this, what are you thinking? 72,000. You've got to be dreaming. Most people are. Mr. Silver must be and suddenly it materializes. It has to be a terrific feeling. It is. At the time that uh, we bought the horse for 72000 of course, there were a lot of people who felt that we paid too much money for him at that time. But uh, um, by December 1st, it doesn't look like too much money. No, it certainly doesn't. But what do you see in a horse like that? That somebody would say, you're obviously paying uh, above the pedigree price. Well, what we've tried to do is to look, ho look for horses that are very good movers, which he is, and for horses that have shown uh, some speed and uh, his pedigree shows stamina on both top and bottom. So we look for horses with speed that have uh, pedigree to run a ride of ground. So now you're just, when are you going to ship him? He's going to leave next week. So he'll be out of here, heading to your brother's farm. That's correct. And then he'll be pointing for the Hutchinson. You're not going to stay for the Florida Derby. I mean, that, it, it, that, we really need to leave that up in the air. You know, these uh, young horses are very unpredictable. Yes, they are. And uh, tentatively, we'll point towards the Hutchinson, the Fountain of Youth, possibly the Florida Derby. Um, I would not think that we'll use all three races, maybe one, maybe two. But well, that means we'll have no Linda Rice horses here this winter? Oh, yes, we will have Linda Rice That's horses here. You mean you'll be commuting? That's right. How many are you going to leave? Um, 10, 12. Mm -hmm. Now, those two-year-olds of yours, you, you do so well with them, and they're always rumored to be good, and they are good. This seems to be the height right now. This is about as good as it can get, isn't it? Yes, I, I believe it is. Um, you know, we, we all have two-year-olds that break maidens, but you always hope that by the end of your two-year-old year, you have a colt that has won the Remsen, which is, has so much prestige to that race uh, as far as a three-year-old uh, picture and campaign, and um, to win it in the fashion that he did. But now you're kind of out of the, you're on your own now. Your family's still pinhooking, but you're out there buying horses to run. Yes, I've been in New York for five years now, and uh, I would think that this race is probably the most significant one that I've uh, won. This is your biggest. You must be very good at the sales. You've been going to them probably since you're four years old. I've been to the Keeneland sales since I was nine. And walking around with your dad? And of course. And will you, what do they to do to you then? Is always look for this, look for that, or did you pick it all up instinctively? Um, oh, you learn as you go, you know, and uh, it's just a natural progression of things, and I don't think that you can go there for 20-some years and not learn something. I know a lot of people have gone <laughs> for 20-some, but obviously you have learned something because you're coming around on your own. You're one of our leading women trainers. We're delighted to have you here. And you know that in New York, we always root 
for horses that begin their careers here. Mm -hmm. So we'll be watching Thank this you. horse with the big foot. Remember Jan Rush and said? That's right. Maybe turf, who knows? Anyway, have a good winter down there. We'll be seeing you here at Aqueduct as well. Thank Linda you. Rice, maybe in the winner's circle in May at Churchill Downs. Good night from Inside Racing.